those military academy students. I wonder what they're doing all the way out here. Oh well. It looks like things are gonna start getting interesting. Sheesh. Ramps and the others can be so unreasonable sometimes.
I'm such an idiot. What am I even doing? Lisa? Oh, Rain. Well, what are you doing out here? Did you eat too much? My mouth says no, but my stomach's thinking yes. You doing okay? You seem a bit unsteady there. Nothing like that. I'm just feeling a little out of it. I'm just going to stay out here for a while and get some fresh air. Then I'll be f Whoa! <laughs> Sorry about that. See? What did I tell you? We've been riding all day. I'm not surprised you're feeling tired. Riding a horse really takes it out of you. I guess you're right. Why didn't that occur to me before? Hey, Elisa. Look up at the sky. Huh? You know, I didn't even notice it last night because we turned in so early. But now that we know, if you're out here to get some air, better to take in the starlight than look at the ground, right? You're right. My father was a technician. Eight years ago, he passed away. My family was never really the same after that. Mother was director of the company back then. She focused all of her energy on making the Reinford group even bigger. She used to treasure our family, but after that, it's like she could barely spare a thought for us. Oh. She did seem like a talented businesswoman when we met her. Well, more than talented to run the Rhinefruit Group. What you saw in River Station was just a watered-down version of her normal intensity. We'd be able to have dinner together maybe once every three months, and that's being generous. But at least I wasn't alone. Grandfather and Sharon were always there for me. That's how it was, huh? I guess you've known Sharon for a long time then. Yeah, my mother hired her about seven years ago. Being a Reinford and all, I never had many people I could really call friends when I was young. Nobles looked down on me, of course, but the common people treated me like I was different from them, too. At least with my grandfather and Sharon around, I never felt totally alone. 
grandfather introduced me to all kinds of different hobbies, like horseback riding and playing the violin. Sharon taught me self-defense and archery, and all the high society etiquette expected of a lady. Meanwhile, my mother kept expanding the company completely against the wishes of my grandfather, the chairman. I see. Though, hasn't Reinford always been a big industrial company? Kind of, yeah. Even back then, they took on projects in all fields, from steel mills to railway construction to guns and tanks. It's not surprising there are people out there who like to call the company a merchant of death. I can't say I completely agree with that side of the company, but I've never felt embarrassed or ashamed about it. But a few years ago, the Reinford Group finally went too far. What do you mean? Those two railway guns set up in Gorelia Fortress on the eastern edge of the Empire? You know about those, right? Yeah, I've heard of them. They're supposed to have the longest range of any orbital cannon in the world. I've only seen their spec sheets, but the destruction they're capable of is terrifying. Erebonia's still fighting with Calvert over Crossbell, and those guns are capable of targeting any point in Crossbell's state. In just a couple hours, they could wipe Crossbell City and its 500,000 citizens off the map. No way. That's way beyond being a weapon of war. More like an instrument of massacre. I couldn't agree more. And neither could my grandfather, who supervised their construction. Even though my mother was the one who signed off on the project, my grandfather regretted it like the decision was his. As he was hesitating over whether to hand them over to the Imperial Army, my mother betrayed him. What? She went behind his back and secured the support of all of Reinford's major shareholders. Everyone from Ruhr's ruling Lord Marquis Rogner to the top brass of the Imperial Army was on her side. In the face of such overwhelming pressure from all sides, my grandfather was forced to capitulate. He stepped down as chairman and my mother wasted no time taking his place. That's when my grandfather decided to leave the company entirely. And me. I thought I'd at least have Sharon on my side, but she just did whatever my mother told her to do. It's been five years since then already. Oh. I think I get it now. Why she gets under your skin, I mean. It's not so much what your mother did, but how it ended up tearing your family apart. Yeah. I couldn't believe my mother would betray her own father. I couldn't believe grandfather would take it without fighting back. 
I couldn't believe Sharon, who'd always supported me, watched it all happen without a word of protest. It really drove it home to me, how big the Reinford group was now, and how small I was. I hated realizing it had become so large that corporate interests were stronger than family ties. Looking back, I guess that's when I decided I'd leave home and enroll in the academy. <laughs> Even when I ran, I couldn't go far enough to escape my mother's shadow or the Reinford name. Then I come here and find my grandfather happily enjoying a whole new life without a care in the world. When I stepped outside, I was feeling so lost, so frustrated, wondering what I'd been doing all this time. But it's kind of strange, you know? I look up at the stars and it feels like I can escape the gravity of everything. I think I'm finally starting to understand. Why my grandfather chose to leave it all behind and move out here in the first place. <laughs> you really are strong, Elisa. Stronger than you realize. You were finally ready to talk about it. About your family and the company and everything. So, maybe you've found what you were looking for to move past that, right? <laughs> maybe you're right. But I don't think I would have been able to if I hadn't enrolled at the Academy. Meeting everyone in Class 7, the lacrosse club, you... I'm a better person for it. Your support has already made a difference. So, thanks. Thanks for worrying about me. And thanks for reminding me to look up, not down. Anytime. Though, truth be told, I came to check on you because Emma asked me to. Sorry to ruin the moment. <laughs> I thought that might be the case. Oh well, there's always next time. It's kind of strange to hear you tell me I'm strong. Because I could say the same thing about you. You always seem to get thrust into the role of leader. Someone we can count on to keep us on track. <laughs> I guess running errands on all my free days is really helping me buckle down. Still, I feel like I've got a long way to go. Especially when I keep running from myself. Huh? Remember back in Keldic? I said that I came to the Academy to find myself. But sometimes, I wonder if maybe I just wanted to get away. From my family, from myself. Oh. Do you not get along well with your family? Oh, I do. I'm not their real son, but my parents always loved me like I was. My sister and I, 
We've had our differences, especially lately, but we still get along pretty well. No, the problem's just with me. Rain. <laughs> still, I suppose the fact you were finally ready to talk about it means that maybe you found what you were looking for to move past that, right? <laughs> Who'd have thought I'd have the chance to feed you your own good advice so soon? I can't believe you can just say things like that with a straight face. Maybe being on the receiving end every now and then will do you some good. <laughs> All right, you got me. I admit defeat. But yeah, I guess I'm starting to figure things out in my own way. Maybe enrolling at Thoris was the first thing I'd done right in a long time. I ended up in class seven. And now, all of us are out here like this, spending time together. Yeah, I like that. I hope the things we learn during our field studies can help us all make a difference in the world. So... Wait, all of us? <coughs> <laughs> you two were gone so long that we started to get a little worried. No way! How long have you been listening? Still, I suppose the fact that you were finally ready to talk about it means that maybe you found what you were looking for to move past that, right? So there's nothing to be embarrassed about. Honestly, you touched my heart. I apologize for eavesdropping on you, but at the same time, I'm kind of glad I did. How did I end up in the middle of this anyway? Fine, if that's how you want to play it. None of you are getting any sleep until you've shared all your most embarrassing secrets. What? I, I, I don't... <laughs> you wish. Seems like you did well. Honestly, I feel like she helped me more than I helped her. Hey, guys? Hmm? This is a really beautiful place. Yeah, ain't it? Ooh, you're moving up in the world. I've got a little reward here for you. Drinks are on me someday.